In the year 972 B.C., the Jewish people call that the ninth jubilee year. There's a history that's recorded in 1 Kings and in 2 Chronicles. It records the history of a great feast that occurred. This great feast occurred when King Solomon and all the people had dedicated the house of God. This great feast consisted of 22,000 oxen and 120,000 sheep. Now that's a great feast. 22,000 oxen. 120,000 sheep were dedicated and sacrificed as an offering. (laughs) I would say, now that's a Thanksgiving dinner. And here we complain if we have to cook a ham and a turkey. 22,000. 120,000 sheep. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to 2 Chronicles chapter 7. Because I'm going to read at the end, or actually at the beginning here, really is at the end of this offering, they've sacrificed. To do a sacrifice back then was not easy. You know, you had to prepare yourself. Not anybody could just come in and make a sacrifice. You had to be of the right lineage. You had to be of the right spirit. You had to be chosen and called and appointed to that honorable position. But they made an offering. Second Chronicles chapter 7. Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, glory, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices and the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priests could not enter into that house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. It's amazing when that happens, the Lord fills his own house. (laughs) They had to allow him. They had to allow him. In fact, if you read before that, they did not only allow him in that sanctuary in the Holy of Holies, they had to take that altar and spread it out into the open fields within the outer courts. There was so much of an offering, they could not contain it in the inner courts alone. The glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house, verse 3. And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down, and the glory of the Lord upon the house, hear what they did. This is what they did after. This is not what they did when they saw. This is not what they did when they brought. This is not what they did when they sang. This is not what they did until after the prayer after the glory came down. They bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshipped and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Turn with me, if you would, now forward into Psalms 100. I have, and I trust if you don't, you get one. It's a very helpful study tool. It's called a chronological Bible. A chronological Bible puts the Scripture in order as it's written, as it's transpiring, and as it's happening. What you see from Second Chronicles chapter 7, as we just read, that after the prayer had been given and after they worshipped, Psalms 100, in fact, Psalms 99 and Psalms 100 was written at this time, at this feast, for this reason. Psalms 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. Oh, that's a lesson to be learned. We are his people. And may I interject that this is my father's house and his world. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endureth to all 
generations. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we praise and we honor you today. We give thanks to you for who you are. and We say we love you and we thank you and we praise you. We worship you and may we look to you during this season of thanksgiving. We say thank you for giving us life. Thank you for giving us your word. Thank you for giving us each other. Thank you for giving us grace. Thank you for giving us mercy. Thank you for giving us Jesus. Thank you for giving us the Holy Spirit. Thank you for this nation in which we now live. Thank you for this church in which we are gathered. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. After the people had heard Solomon pray, after they saw the fire come down, after the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house, it was after these things that they had bowed themselves down with their faces to the ground and that they worshiped and praised him, saying that his mercy endureth forever. It was after these things they entered into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. It was after they saw the awesome power of God. It was after they saw the magnificent glory of the Lord. It was after this that they were able and they were thankful unto him and they were able to bless his name. After they heard, after they saw, then they bowed and they were thankful. After. We're about to embark upon Thanksgiving this week. I pray you hear the after portion of this message. You know, it's been estimated that it was around the year 3,975 B.C. that creation began. And inside a short 1,500 years of that powerful display of the Creator, when God executed judgment by way of the flood, just inside of 1,500 years, the flood was come, and it came because the world had turned so far from God that the temptations and the murder and the, that there was a rampant fall from righteousness, that sin was so widespread that judgment day came. Judgment day came. 1,500 years, they say, after the creation of this world. Here we're in America just a couple hundred years old. Here we are as a people just a couple thousand years this side of Christ. Judgment came and it flooded the world and it destroyed all of mankind except Noah and those that were chosen. Do you know the first thing happened once the ark landed on dry land after God destroyed the earth? Called Noah and he was faithful and built that ark. You know the first thing that happened when that ark hit the land was God spoke to Noah. That's the first thing recorded in the book of Genesis is that God spoke to Noah. Noah not only obeyed him to build the ark, but he obeyed him what he said. He told him to let the animals roam. He told him to replenish the earth. And Noah obeyed and emptied that ark. You know what the first thing that Noah did after that work was done? He built an altar. He made an offering. And I'd say that it was a thanksgiving offering that he made. I'd say that he was thankful to be on dry land. I'd say that he was thankful to be out of that smelly ark. And don't you think that thing stunk? I can't even have a hamster in my house. Good golly, can you imagine all those living creatures and the stench? Mm, I say he was thankful that he got out on, on dry land. It was after. There's not a record in my Bible. Maybe he did it. Maybe he didn't. But it's not recorded, so therefore I'm left to suppose. So just suppose with me. Suppose you had to care for every one of those animals. Suppose you had to stand with that stench every day. Suppose you had to deal with those family in such close quarters for such a long time. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. Just suppose that you were the one that had to do that. Would you have offered thanks then? Would you have offered thanks for all the smell and the, the, well, I about said it, and Lord, forgive me, all the dung that's on your feet? You had to be. He didn't have a scoop shovel like we have today. He didn't have hired slaves back then. He didn't have that. 
He didn't, he, they had to do it themselves. Was he thankful for all the hard work and the effort? Was he thankful? My Bible doesn't record it if he was. My Bible records his thankfulness being given after he landed on dry land, after he obeyed God, after he heard from heaven. It was then he was thankful. So I have another question. Why do we as humans always have to see or hear and experience such as judgment before we turn to God in reverence or in thanks? Just why? Why does it have to be after? Before I continue, let me just say how utterly thankful I am to God the Father for giving us His Holy Son so that we can experience His full grace and His full mercy. Because my Bible says that it is appointed unto man once to die and then judgment. If we do not have the full effect of grace and mercy now, we will face the full effect of eternal separation, eternal damnation of the soul. And once that is seen, it will be too late. There will not be an opportunity for an after like Noah had. There will not be an opportunity of thanksgiving like they had with King Solomon and all the people. So let's read one more historical fact, if you would. This one was written, according to my commentaries, about 96 A.D., a hundred years after Christ departed. I call these words history because they are written down. They are a historical rendering. It's written, therefore it's historic. However, the history of these pages have not been fully realized yet. Of course, I'm talking about the book of Revelation. The writings have not yet been seen in full. The prophecies of that book have not yet all been fulfilled. Turn with me, if you would, to chapter 7 of the book of Revelation. We'll start reading at verse 9. So while you're turning there, let me set the stage. John saw a vision. And he recorded that vision in the book of Revelation. He had an opportunity to build his altar of thanks, if it were. And it's so we too, the human race today, we can, we can read this prophetic, awe-inspiring, fear-building spectacle that John saw. Which will without a doubt one day come to pass. And as such, we too have the opportunity to offer our thanksgiving to the great God of the universe before this judgment day comes. But do we? Do we offer thanksgiving to him now? I'd say no. Not all of us. Not everyone does. Let me tell you a little bit about chapter 6. Because in chapter 6, that's where we read that there were seven seals that were to be broken. And six of them were poured out and broken. It was God's wrath in those six seals. And the people of that day, just like the people of this day will see one day, will see it in full power of God in action. They will see the fire come down just like the people at King Solomon saw it. They'll see it. But I just wonder what they'll do. Because if you back up, I'd say 11 verses. Why don't you go ahead and back up and go to chapter 6, verse um, 15. Chapter 6 and verse 15. Because I believe this is paramount. In trusting the fact of the after. The six vials had been opened the judgments of that day were seen and they were felt by mankind. And what did they do? Verse Chapter 6 and verse 15 says, And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men. You hear me now? These are not cowards. These are the top-notch individuals. The mighty men and every bondman and every free man. They hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. And they said to the mountains and to the rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the land. For the great day of his wrath is come. Who shall be able to stand? They hid from him. I would say that these are the words of an unrepentant soul. And they are the cries of a fearful people. But just like Noah... Just like the people of King Solomon's day, unfortunately, thanksgiving was only given after they saw. Only after the six of the seven seals were loosed did they come. And that's where we are now at. Go to Revelation chapter 7 and verse 9. Here's the after. 
after this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude which no man could number, of all the nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with right robes and psalms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and upon the Lamb, I'm sorry, unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts, and they fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God. Remember, this is after. Read the first six chapters. It's not happening before. It's after. Verse 12. Here's what the angels and the elders and those beasts said after. Amen. You know, it means so be it. So it is, so it shall be. Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving. Do you know those all go together? So be it. Blessings and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving. And honor and power and might be unto the God forever and ever. And then finally, so be it. So it shall be. So it is. Amen. And I love what it says as we continue to read. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And I said unto them, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of the great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Do you realize that that happened? After. <laughs> Therefore... Are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple? And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them unto the living fountains of water. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Can I submit to you why they're crying? You know, I heard it said that the man said one time, he said, I am not afraid to die. He said, I'm ashamed to die. I'm ashamed to go before my maker and say I had to wait till after the trials and the tribulations. I had to wait till after I heard your voice. I had to wait till after I saw the power come down. It was after And now that I see how great and how holy and just and righteous you are, and now I fall at his feet to cry how holy you are, that he would wipe away those tears. May we acknowledge his supreme righteousness, his holy nature. May we recognize our thankfulness to him and to others now, not after. If there was ever, if there was ever a time of thanksgiving, I'd think that that was the day of a great thanksgiving. When they said amen, blessings and glory and honor, and thanksgiving, power and might. You know, all these people had their after moment. They had the chance to build an altar. They had a chance to offer thanksgiving. Listen to the preacher today. Not everyone will have that chance. Not everyone will have a time after. See, if you keep on reading, you'll find that the angels of heaven, they changed their tune. I pray you hear the preacher today. They changed their tune from amen and blessings and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might. They changed their tune to whoa, whoa, whoa to the inhabitants of the earth. 
And woe is right for the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of their works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and wood, which neither can see, neither hear, nor walk. Neither repented they of their murderers, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. If you don't believe me, read it. It's Revelations chapter 9 and verse 20 and 21. And what was right for the nations were angry, and thy wrath has come in the time of the dead, that they should be judged. Woe. Revelations eleven eighteen, And what was right? Because when that seventh seal was opened, and the seven trumpets, and the seven vials, and when they are loosed, and once those plagues have been completed, there is no more after. It's over. The end of the book has come. And that's a dreadful day for God. Because I've heard it also said that those tears that will be wiped away will be the tears of God. Because it's on that day that He has to tell the creation that He made. It's on that day that He has to tell the creation that He died for. It's on that day that He says, I made a way of escape and you refused it. It's on that day I have to cast you out of my presence. Do you know what hell is? It's 100% lack of love and of light. God is light, God is love, and that hell is eternal separation from both of those. I pity the Marine that says, I will go to hell with my brother. Sounds made good on paper, may keep them educated, motivated through that fight, but I pity them that believe it. On that day there will be no shouting of thanksgiving like they had when the people heard the prayer of King Solomon. There will be no time of thanksgiving, no time for an after altar to be built for those that did not offer thanksgiving before that day. We read seven times in the book of Revelation. Seven times. It's called the book of life. Seven times that book of life is mentioned in the book of Revelations. It's there for a reason. If you've not offered your thanks now, if you've not built your altar of sacrifice by that time, it's too late. There is no afterthought. It's too late. I would submit to you today as we close. My only purpose in life may be an example to others. Don't wait until you have an argument with your wife to tell her thank you. If your loved one's not here today, I pray you go home and you kneel down in front of them and you just say thank you. If you have a brother, a sister, an aunt, an uncle, a friend, a neighbor, just tell them thank you. Would you do that for me? Don't wait until that argument comes. Don't wait until they say, I can't stand it. You need to tell it to me. Tell it to them. Be thankful. This day of thanksgiving is going to come. And I have no doubt that the devil's going to try to make it angry. I'm going to be faced with it. My daughter's boyfriend's going to be there. Holes in his ear big enough for me to put my hand through. Lord, help me. May I be thankful. May I see your word alive and active in my life. So, Heavenly Father, during this season of thanksgiving, I pray that before that day come upon us, that thanksgiving day, that we say thank you now. That we build up our most inner faith with saying thank you to them now. That we would have that strength to say thank you on that day. Not only that day of thanksgiving, but on that day of judgment, Lord. It's coming upon everyone that breathes this air. It's coming. Soon and very soon, unfortunately. But I know that your will is that none should perish, but that all should have everlasting life. I would love to see that fulfilled. So Lord, we as a congregation today, through this message of after, make us mindful of the before. 
May we come before your throne. May we come before the judgment. May we come before the heartache. May we come before the argument. May we come before and say thank you. Would you as a congregation just say thank you out loud today? Say it. And one more time. And lastly, thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, as we dismiss today, I pray the words of the book of Revelation that we read, I pray the words of the Old Testament that you wrote for our instruction would be on our hearts and in our minds, Lord, that you would lead us and direct us by those words. May we be mindful, Lord, of that day of judgment that's coming, but may we be thankful now. May we be thankful to our loved ones, thankful to our neighbors, thankful to our friends. May we exude Christianity and be Christ-like in our words and in our deeds. And Lord, when humanity (laughs) rears its ugly head, may we be humble enough to come to those that we love and say, I'm sorry and I'm thankful for you. I pray that your son the Holy Spirit would reside in our hearts, in our minds, that you would lead us, guide us, direct us, convict us, and convince us. In the name of Jesus, I pray, as Wayne says it, for your glory and for our good. In Christ's name, I pray a blessing on this Thanksgiving season. In Jesus' name, amen.